Apple just dropped some new Macs with next gen Apple Silicon in January. You know what that means? Time to rearrange my production schedule because I just had to buy one. But while I'm waiting for my M2 Pro Mac Mini to arrive tomorrow, I gotta build a PC to compare it to because let's be real, I'm a PC guy or at least I was from about 1983 until I switched to a Mac Studio last year. But as always, I compare every M series Mac I've bought and reviewed like the M1 Mac Mini, iMac, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro and Mac Studio to a comparably priced and spec Windows PC and as I expected, the choices I make for the PC build always generates the most questions and controversy from both Mac and PC fans. So this time around, I'm taking some time to go over the test PC, what components I'm using and why. Then I'll assemble it, run a few tests to get an idea of its performance. And for anyone with questions during the Mac mini series, I'll just refer them back to this video. Let's do this. It's the money. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and this isn't going to be one of my typical PC build videos with a bunch of fancy b-roll and montages. This is just a down and dirty build because the most important part is why I chose each of these components. But first, I should quickly tell you about the Mac I bought. I went with the M2 Pro base model, 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigs of storage for $1300 but full disclosure. I used my 10% veterans discount on this purchase. For the PC build, I have two main criteria to achieve an overarching goal. The criteria, the PC needs to consist of all new components and have a total cost of as close to the $1,300 Mac mini price as possible. The overall goal is to build a desktop PC that fairly represents desktop PC performance at the same price point as the Mac, because let's be honest, the number one factor in basically any consumer's purchase choices is cost. And when we're focusing on the M2 Pro Mac mini, the price the consumer is willing or able to spend is $1,300. If I was just going with a PC with as close to the specs of the Mac mini as possible, I could do that for probably half the price, but let's see what a $1,300 production slash creative PC looks like. I'm going with the new Intel i5 13400F. It's a 10 core CPU with six P cores and four E cores, just like the M2 Pro. The CPU is the one area I did want to get as close to an apples to apples comparison as possible between the x86 and ARM based processors. The 13400F is the closest you can get spec wise on the x86 desktop side to the M2 Pro. I'm installing the i5 on the ASUS Prime B660M-AD4 motherboard. Simply put, it's a really good price to performance LGA 1700 motherboard, all the features you need, none of what you don't, and only cost about 120 bucks. For RAM, I'm going with a 32 gigabyte kit of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 3200CL16 memory. I anticipate this will be the one of the more controversial choices. First, why DDR4 instead of DDR5? Simple, a DDR5 motherboard and memory pushes the build past the price range. And at the i5 level, there isn't a significant performance gain with DDR5 over DDR4. Next, why 32 gigabytes for the PC while the Mac only has 16? Again, it's simple, cost. Cost is the number one factor in component selection when building a PC, and while upgrading the Mac mini from 16 to 32 gigabytes of memory will cost you $400, this entire 32 gig kit only costs $99. For storage, I have a one terabyte Samsung 980 Pro NVMe SSD. Other than the 990, which is too expensive, this is the fastest Gen 4 SSD available, and I need something that can compete with the speeds of the Apple mainboard mounted SSD, especially when it comes to read write speeds and content creation workloads and apps. So this $120 980 Pro is it. Instead of using the stock Intel cooler for the 13400F, I'm going with a slight upgrade and using a Deepcool AK400 tower air cooler that should allow the CPU to achieve its max turbo power of 148 watts while being super affordable at under $30. The next two components are not hugely impactful on the overall build. Just like us, the computer needs a roof over its head and the lights on. So I'm using a Fractal Meshify 2 Mini to house everything and I'm powering it with a Corsair CX650M. The PC should draw a max of about 500 watts. So this 650 watt 80 plus bronze semi-modular PSU is perfect, especially at $80. For the case, well, 
I have all the best micro ATX cases made in the past year, and this one was easily accessible and meets the budget, but any of the MATX cases I've reviewed in the past year should work fine here. Finally, probably the most controversial choice will be the graphics card I'm going with, while spec-wise, the 16-core Apple GPU probably comes closest to the 5.5 teraflop GTX 1660 Ti. I'm going with the RTX 3060 Ti. We know Apple Silicon GPUs still have a long way to go in terms of 3D performance, whether that's in 3D rendering or game engine development. I demonstrated that with my Mac Studio series, where an entry-level RTX 3050 demolished the 24-core M1 Max GPU in those 3D applications. But when it comes to hardware-accelerated 2D media development, like photo and video editing, thanks to its GPU and media engine, the Mac Studio shredded my 32-core Threadripper RTX 2080 Ti $6,000 production PC, which is why the Mac Studio is now my production system. So to try to compete with both the Apple's GPU and media engine in content creation workloads, I used the remaining budget to get the best graphics card possible, which is the $450 RTX 3060 Ti but I expect it probably still won't be enough. Also, anyone wondering why Nvidia not AMD? When it comes to content creation applications, they're just optimized for CUDA acceleration and the much better Nvidia media encoders, which is too bad because the extra VRAM and equivalent Radeon cards would be nice to have. And there you have it. I told you it'd be down and dirty. Now, the total cost of this system comes to $1,227, leaving $72 for a Windows 11 license. Although I've never paid more than $15 for a Windows key. Microsoft really doesn't care how you get Windows. They just want your analytics. Anyway, now that the system is built, let's quickly run a few tests to see how it performs and get a rough idea where it should fit in alongside all the other Macs I'll be testing. I started with Cinebench R23 for raw CPU horsepower, and in multi-core performance, the i5-13400F scores a 15,749, which is about 65% better than my M1 Pro MacBook, and even 27% better than my M1 Mac Studio. Of course, during the single core run, Windows decided to update, something I don't have to worry about with Mac OS, but I suspended updates, reran it, and got a score of 1,760, or about 11% higher than my M2 MacBook Air. To get an idea of raw GPU horsepower, I ran the Geekbench 5 OpenCL benchmark, and as expected, the RTX 3060 Ti performs 254% better than the M1 Pro, and 151% better than the M1 Max, but as I always say, the real test is in real work, and when I run the Adobe Premiere Pro Pugent Bench test with GPU CUDA acceleration enabled, the PC scores 26% behind my MacBook Pro. So there you go. My initial impressions are the raw CPU performance of the 13400F, especially the multi-core performance, was better than I expected, and while that'll definitely be helpful in CPU demanding workflows, especially things like complex coding and code compilation, my prediction is the M2 Pro will probably end up outperforming the PC overall in the productivity and content creation workflows that Mac users buy Macs for, while again, the PC will dominate in 3D workflows. But just to set expectations, the main focus of my Mac mini series will be to see how the M2 Pro system fills the gap in the desktop space between the base model mini and the M1 Max Mac Studio, with the PC being thrown into the mix as the alternative option. So I pick up the mini tomorrow morning and we'll start with an overview and initial impressions video and of course complete this chart with the M2 Pro results. And from there we'll go into the in-depth evaluations of individual workflows just like I did with the Mac Mini and Mac Studio. So if you're not already, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that series and I'll see you tomorrow.